This is the second video over notating a set of numbers. In this video, I'll be showing you how to use interval and set builder notation. Now, I told you we're going to use three different ways to notate the set of numbers. This one was graphing. Let's move on to the second one. The second way we can notate or write a group of numbers is by using interval notation. The keyword for this is interval. Interval means we're going to group it from the smallest number to the largest number. So it always goes smallest to largest with smallest on the left, comma, and then largest on the right. Now, I have written here with a parenthesis in the bracket on the outside, but actually it's only going to have one or the other. So this is going to be a parenthesis or a bracket here, and this is going to be a parenthesis or a bracket there. Interval notation is very closely related to your graph. So if you always need to graph it on a number line before you do interval notation, that's perfectly understandable because they're almost going to look exactly the same. So let's look at some examples of these. And actually, these examples are the exact same examples that we had before. So we're going to take our graphs, and then we're going to um, write down the interval notation that corresponds to them. So very quickly, let me re-graph these. All the numbers between 4 and 17, so I find 4 and 17. I shade all the numbers in between. This one is not including, so I have parentheses on both ends. So my interval notation is going to look almost exactly the same. If I have a parenthesis on the left, then I'm going to have a parenthesis on the left. I have a parenthesis on the right, so I'm going to have a parenthesis on my right. Now I need to do the numbers. Remember, the smallest number, which here is 4 on the left, comma, the largest number, which is 17, here on my right. So my interval notation is 4, comma, 17, with parentheses on both sides. Example 2, we know that it's very similar. We are including 4, so we have a bracket at 4. We are not including 17, so we have a parenthesis at 17. And we are including all the numbers in between. So my interval notation is bracket with 4 on the left, comma, 17 with parenthesis on the right. Example 3, 4 and 17 including both. So I have a bracket at 4, I have a bracket at 17, shading all the numbers in between. And my interval notation is bracket with 4, comma, 17, bracket. And so now you see here examples of interval notation where they are all these boxed answers in purple. So that's the second way to notate sets of numbers. The third way to notate set of numbers is the set builder notation. Now, I have a way to try and help you remember what set builder notation is. And not only that, but it's a way to try and decipher between what is interval notation and what is set builder notation, because students get these mixed up quite often. So, set builder notation. The key word that I see here is the word builder. Well, whenever I see that word builder, I think of a cartoon character, which I have written here, Bob the Builder. So here is Bob the Builder here. Now, I want you to look at Bob the Builder very carefully because he's a happy guy and he's almost always smiling. But if you notice when he's smiling, notice that we don't see any teeth. Now, one of the major reasons that people smile without showing their teeth is because they're not happy with their teeth. So there's an easy way to fix that is Bob really needs braces. Now, this is just my theory, so don't go writing into the cartoon or anything saying, hey, show Bob's teeth or anything like that. This is just a, a way to help you remember set builder notation. So if you see set builder, I want you to think Bob the builder. Bob needs better teeth, so the way to fix that is braces. So the way that we start with set builder notation is these symbols outside here, which are braces. So set builder notation always has braces on the outside. Now that's just a way to help you remember this. That doesn't tell me or tell you where set builder notation came from in the beginning. So let me kind of backtrack a little bit. If you ever see the word set 
almost always a set is denoted by braces. So that's why a set builder has braces on the outside. Now, you need to draw these with braces, not brackets, not parentheses, or anything else. And again, if this is written homework and you can't draw the braces, that's understandable. Practice makes perfect. But you can go ahead and just do squiggles on the outside. I will understand that you need braces by this. Okay. Other things to note about set builder notation is it's almost always represented by the letter X. And we see X is the most common variable or letter in math. And then we see this bar here. Now, this is not an absolute value bar. This bar means the word such that. So if I put all of this information together, the braces on the outsides means the set of, and then X's, such that. And then what we need to do here is we need to fill in the blank. So set builder notation comes with all of this extra that I have written here, and then our job is to fill in whatever the blank is. So let's go back to those examples that we saw before. So you can see here that I have the exact same examples and the exact same graph. Our job is to fill in just the set builder notation. Well, the set means the braces, or another way you can remember it is set builder, Bob the Builder, Rob needs braces to help his teeth. So I always start with braces on the outside. Also, we have X and then that bar, which means such that. Now, that is standard in all set builder or all just set notation. So I'm going to write that for all of these examples here. Now, our job is to fill in the blank here. Okay. All right. So we're going to use inequalities to represent set builder notation. Now this has endpoints of 4 and 17, and my shade is sandwiched between those two numbers. So I'm going to have 4 on the left and 17 on the right, and then my letter or my X sandwiched between those two numbers. So if shaded is between, then my variable is sandwiched in between my two numbers. Now I need to fill it in with inequalities. Well, if it's ever a between statement like we see here, the inequalities will always get filled in with less than. So this is less than here, and this is less than there. And let me take a moment to explain why. I'm going to kind of split this up. So 4 is less than x is less than 17. What does that ultimately mean? Well, I'm going to take the right half of it. x is less than 17. That means if I find my number 17 on my number line, my shading is going to be less than it, which we see there. Now let me look at the left-hand side of this. 4 is less than x. Let me kind of reverse that. Let me mirror it around, and let me change it to be x is greater than 4. It makes a lot more sense if I do it that way. Well, if I find 4 on my number line, I see that my shading is greater than 4. And if I combine these two together, I can see that I have everything shading greater than 4 and less than 17. So that's how this um, inequality fits together. So I have my final set builder notation here. So I suggest that you pause the video and see if you can finish the next two by yourself. Okay, it's going to look almost exactly the same. Well, I have my numbers on the outside, my x in between, and then since I have a sandwich between, I'm going to have less than or inequality symbols that are pointing to the left. The only difference is, is that this inequality symbol needs to include 4 on the left. So that changes it to a less than or equal to. So if there's no including, then there should be no or equal to bar. So my parenthesis here, no or equal to bar, bracket there means I have an or equal to bar there. So this is my final answer here. Example three, again, almost the exact same way. My numbers on my outside, my x is sandwiched in between. Here I am including both of my endpoints. So both of these need to be less than or equal to. So that is my final set builder notation there. 
So I have basically identified all three ways to notate a set of numbers. I'm going to stop this video here, but my next video is just going to work through a couple more examples of graphing, interval, and set builder notation.